Hi, thanks for watching Nova History Remembered. The Southern Railway's Bluemont Branch, later the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad, kept chugging along during the early parts of the 1900s, hauling passengers and freight between Alexandria and Bluemont. The line was a very minor piece of the Southern Railway's empire, but it was vitally important to the people, farms, and businesses of Northern Virginia. Cars were becoming more commonplace and improving, but the roads were often poor and sometimes impossible to use. Now, however, changes were coming that would alter the railroad's fortunes for both good and bad. In 1904, John McLean, the owner of the Washington Post, and Senator Stephen Elkins of West Virginia took over the rights to a trolley line from Georgetown to Great Falls, Virginia. They built an electric railway, a relatively new technology, which promised a cleaner, quieter ride through the countryside. At Great Falls, a railroad station, dance hall, merry-go-round, and other attractions were built to accommodate people who wanted to get out of the city for amusement. The Great Falls and Old Dominion Railroad was an immediate hit. After their success with the Great Falls and Old Dominion, McLean and Elkins felt ready to take on a larger railroad and lease the Bluemont Branch from the Southern Railway in 1912. The Bluemont Branch ran from Alexandria to Bluemont, Virginia. Consolidating both lines under one company, the line to Bluemont became the Washington and Old Dominion Railway. Their decision to run electric was a sound one, as during warm weather, when windows were down, the old steam engine streamed hot, dirty smoke into the passenger cars. While they electrified the WNOD Bluemont branch, at first it was only for passenger cars, as electric freight locomotives were not powerful enough to haul the heavy loads from quarries and brickyards. Two steam locomotives were bought to do that work, and freight was pulled by steam engines until 1918. By 1918, electric freight locomotives were ready to haul freight, and the WNOD Railway retired their last steam equipment. The ingenious workers in the WNOD shops even built their own electric locomotives, one from a damaged boxcar. The porthole windows were unique in the railroading world. An advantage electric passenger cars had was that they could stop and start quickly. The old steam locomotive-driven passenger trains were much slower to get going, so passengers could only be picked up at the main stations and a few small stops in between. By using trolley cars, the WNOD could put numerous stops along the line. They were often called flag or whistle stops. A passenger waiting at a shelter would step out and flag down the car. This was helpful as the WNOD promoted their excursion business taking weekend and summer vacationers to points west along the rail line. A very lucrative business for the WNOD was transporting milk from the outer areas of the rail line. There were dozens of dairy farms in Fairfax and Loudoun counties, especially around the town of Herndon. The only easy way to get the milk to the city, where there was a high demand, was on the railway. Dairymen would arrive at the crack of dawn or earlier to unload their milk cans at the station, usually on a platform built for that purpose. The WNOD had passenger cars with sections just for loading the milk cans. In Arlington, trucks and wagons from the local dairies would pick up the cans to haul for processing the milk into cream, butter, ice cream, or drinking milk. In the evening, the process would be reversed and the dairies would bring the empty cans to the train cars. The cans were labeled with the name of the farmer and rail line they were using so they would be returned safely. The WNOD tried to increase passenger business by offering a parlor car which would only stop at the main stations and provide a speedier trip to the end of the line in Bluemont, only a two-hour trip. The car offered upgraded seats, amenities such as magazines, and a porter to hand out cooling towels in the hot summer months. This was not a success and was discontinued after a short time. 
In 1916, labor unrest came to the WNOD. The Amalgamated Association of Street and Electric Railway Employees of America came to the Washington, D.C. area and unionized the local rail lines. The Amalgamated was known for improving working conditions on railroads. One of their successes was the elimination of side platform trolley cars, which killed and injured many rail workers. The union and workers tried to speak with the management of the railroad, but were turned away. One issue was that there was now absentee ownership of the WNOD. Senator Elkins had died not long after the WNOD was formed, and McLean was dying of cancer while the employees were being unionized. Their heirs had no interest in the rail line, so important decisions were left up to hired management. A strike was called on a weekday, and at 11 a.m., after commuters were at work in the city, the Washington Old Dominion workers walked out, leaving riders to find their own way home in the evening. The strike became national news as well-known figures in the labor movement became involved. In the end, most of the employees lost their jobs and the rail line suffered from it. The labor issues and general mismanagement prompted complaints from users of the WNOD who thought of many charming names for the line. Complaints included dirty cars with no heat, cars not stopping at a flag stop, probably because the motorman was behind schedule and pretended not to see the passenger, and then of course trains running late. Not surprisingly, passenger service began to dwindle and no longer made a profit. Cars were becoming more reliable, more affordable, and faster. More and more roads were being paved and were easier to drive on. And people wanted to travel on their schedule rather than waiting for a train, which is most often late. In an effort to hold on to passenger business, the WNOD started a bus service to pick up commuters in communities and drop them off at train stations, something more popular today with the Washington Metro system than it was with the WNOD. The Great Depression led to a bankruptcy for the WNOD Railway in the mid-1930s, with the line becoming the WNOD Railroad. The Great Falls Line was shut down for good, and its trackbed became Old Dominion Drive. The Percival de Beaumont section of the WNOD was closed, and the land sold after the trestle at Round Hill needed replacing. It was just too expensive to justify the cost. Also, the lone freight customer in Beaumont went out of business. Passenger service continued, but the aging electrical infrastructure needed to be replaced, and there was no money to do so. The railroad finally obtained approval to stop passenger service in 1941, removed all the electrical equipment, and bought freight locomotives running on gas and diesel fuel. Freight service was still profitable, but trucks were starting to cut into the railroad's profits, so the WNOD bought their own trucks to provide better customer service. The end of passenger service was short-lived, though, as the gas shortages of World War II made public transportation a priority, and the federal government required the WNOD to start carrying passengers again. The problem was that the railroad no longer had the passenger cars, so they had to buy used and cast off gas-propelled cars anywhere they could find them. Breakdowns sometimes occurred, which made the service unreliable. Better passenger cars were eventually found, but when the war ended, gas became plentiful and people went back to their cars. As it was before the war, passenger service lost money and offset the profits made by the freight department of the WNOD. In the next segment, we'll see how the rapidly developing Northern Virginia suburbs affected the Washington Old Dominion Railroad. By the early 1950s, there were new developments coming for the railroad, developments which may have kept the railroad running well into the 21st century.